So yeah, market volatility is important. I think you'll look at your business model if you're if you're only raising revenues from um, volumes and market activity and your cost base is high, you could you could have a problem there. Um, lucky enough, if you run a broker and an MTF, what you see is a lot of the market participants are holding positions for longer. To give you an idea, May versus October. Let's look at May. In May, there was 13 days when there was more than 100 point movement in euro dollar. In October, there was five. So all the, all the primary venues say, look, volume, volumes are off. What we saw was that our net open overnight positions were about triple. So people were holding it. So there's another way of, of raising revenue there. But I think you know we have to keep all the venues honest. Um, make sure that we avoid corporate bloat. Deliver the product effectively, efficiently, so that you can operate with lower volumes. Likewise, I mean, what else can drive it? Sure, you know, it's it's the market. Volatility will come back. We're in a low interest rate environment. I can't see that changing very much for the next year or two. So we're going to have flat spots. But there's a whole swathe of the market, be that geographically or be that in other asset classes, who are just getting into FX. It is the land of opportunity, volatile or not, low interest rates or not, you should be seeing FX volumes growing. And I fundamentally believe when the next BIS report comes out, you're going to see huge growth from here. I think it's going to. I think the reality is that regulators are now going to look more on fact-based, um, take a fact-based judgment approach. Um, I don't think that sends that much of a dark shadow. I mean, they're looking at all asset classes right now. If certain individuals are, you know, are found guilty or, or wrongdoing, then so be it. And they're individuals. It doesn't mean the whole industry is wrong. Um, so I think it's inevitable to be greater regulation, but you know, I think the FX markets work the way it has done. Um, especially the spot market being self-regulated for so long. I think that will continue. Um, the chair of the ACI, is it? David Walcock, said perhaps we can come up with a universal um, code of conduct, front to back office. It's a lofty goal, but maybe there's enough industry participants out there that could get together and do that. We'd support it. Um, obviously, look, we're regulated as an MTF, one of the few for FX, probably the only one for FX and spot FX. I don't necessarily think that has to be the case. I think it's fine for spot FX to be OTC traded. Um, regulators are going to go through every single asset class, find out what's gone wrong, and as I said, probably find the individuals are cancelled. But I don't think anything's broken, and we should expect more fact based judgmental um, regulation going forward. So everyone talks about price, product, service. Um, you have to deliver that, it's a given. You can't ignore technology. I mean, it's crazy out there in the market, people are saying, well, we've gone far enough from technology. Well, anyone who's more technical than me can have a look at Moore's Law, which is held since 1965. Um, Apparently last year they said it might slow down from rather than the, the number of transistors doubling every two years, it might only be every three years now. So technology's got an awful long way to go. When you have primary markets, you still send out market data in batches of 100 milliseconds, you can see there's an awful long way to go. So what we need to do is work with the underlying owners of the market, who are the banks, the liquidity providers. Um, hopefully help them price more effectively, price more efficiently, I'm coming across like a friend of the banks, God help us, but um, it's kind of true. Um, and I think that's what's going to drive the whole FX market is that pricing becomes more consistent, more accurate, more timely. I can't tell you if it's microseconds, um, nanoseconds, um, or batch, batches of hundreds of milliseconds. But certainly we need to give the price providers the ability to price um, accurately at all times. And we have an awful long way to go as what people consider to be real time in the marketplace isn't real time. So I think it's working with those price providers so that they can make sure they always have firm orders in any order book and they're not going to be hit on a, on a stale price. And that's going to benefit the buy side 
and also benefit the, uh, the sales side. So really that's what we focus on. We focus 70% of my cost base is technology and more than half of that is focused on the liquidity provision. Um, because without that, none of us are going to buy our customers. I wish I did. So January apparently ESMA and CFTC will apply. Um, they said in July that certain European MTFs will be given given comparable SEF status, whatever that means. What's comparable and what a certain um, MTFs mean. So I'm hoping we will be given comparable status, but I don't think it will happen. I think already you've got reg arbitrage between trade reporting, a lot of talk about trade repositories, and can't see that air driving volume personally. And I do worry about what's in trade repositories. It might take them to the next crisis to add up what's in there. And you have to look beyond that and see, you know, what risk they're trying to find. Um, so, I obviously don't know. I think the fact that we're sitting here discussing electronic trading going back to voice and certain trading going to Asia tells you that the regulators have got this wrong. They've just got it wrong and they should talk to each other first. Um, I also strongly believe that regulators' jurisdiction ends at the end of their territory. So if anyone ever spoken to a US regulator and said exactly where their boundaries are, um, and perhaps the job there's them to do that. So I hope ESMA and CFTC come up in January and say, yes, we agree and we have similar rules or the same rules. But having seen what's happened over the last 18 months, I seriously doubt it. I think the new normal is bright. So yeah, okay, interest rates, low volatility, okay, done that to death. But um, there's a, on the buy side, there's greater ease of price discovery than ever. There's greater ease of market access than ever. Um, we'll have to get used to a wider range of market participants. We're going to have to get used to higher volumes, smaller tickets, more diversity, and more demand of customers. That's our job as platform providers to meet the buy side. I think there's challenges then arrive there for the sell side, for the liquidity providers. Again, it's our duty to work with them to ensure they can price this new flow and this new opportunity that lies ahead of us, the new type of customer coming into the FX marketplace. And I think only you know, the leading venues in terms of technology can assist um, the liquidity providers to ensure that the buy side benefits and indeed the whole market benefits. So in short, you know, I think the next decade is going to be a very exciting one.